Hey guys, this episode is brought to you by Anchor. Anchor has been my platform of choice to distribute my podcast since the very first episode in 2019. It's a free podcast hosting platform that does not limit your storage, allows you to create in the app, and has helpful analytics. You can also add any song from Spotify directly to your episodes, record interviews, and earn passive income with no minimum listenership. Anchor has also distributed my podcast to all the major streaming platforms, which was a huge help to get it out there to new audiences. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. You could have never imagined like just getting to this point now. Right. Um, with a DM from Tiesto yesterday, like it just blows my mind. Hey there, welcome to Rave Culture Cast, your weekly guide to the EDM community, music festivals, and more. Hosted by me, Emma Capotis. Each week, I'll be covering everything from dance music culture, industry news, trending topics, and festival tips, advice, and reviews. You can also expect to hear stories from ravers, artists, business owners, and more. Tune in every Wednesday for your weekly dose of peace, love, unity, and respect. Hey guys, welcome back to Rave Culture Cast, your weekly guide to the EDM community, music festivals, and more. I'm your host, Emma Capotis. Welcome, fam. Happy Wednesday. You guys, I'm super excited because I'm pre recording a couple episodes because I'm going on a motherfucking vacation, <laughs> not a festival vacation, an actual beach vacation and I'm so pumped about it so if you're watching on YouTube and you're like Emma you're in the same hair makeup and outfit as last week I apologize but it is what it is (laughs) we got to keep the content coming so how are you guys I hope you're all doing well uh, sending you lots of love and hugs wherever you guys are. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm taking some time off, much needed time off. I get to spend time with my family, go to the beach. Um, we always go to Hilton Head Island in South Carolina, like every other year. And, um, yeah, I'm getting a tan, getting caught up on some reading, just like taking a break and relaxing. And I can't wait for a freaking pina colada. Oh my God, I can taste it now. So that is what I am up to, Um, but I'm super excited to be here, you guys. I have a really fun episode. I'm super excited to share this guest story with you today, Um, but before we dive into that, super quick announcements here. Uh, I just wanted to mention this because I've talked about this on just like my Instagram page and things like that, but some of you might know that I created a course called How to Build a Highly Engaged Social Media Audience. Um, I offered it in January and then again this summer, and I decided to basically make it, I guess we'll say like indefinitely available on my website um, because it's all video lessons. There's a full course platform um, and dashboard that you get access to when you purchase this course. And yeah, you can log in now. And instead of waiting for me to like release it again in the future, I'm super proud of all of the lessons in this. Um, This is for you if you guys are an aspiring creator Um, and you want to learn everything you need to know about like growing your platforms and your engagement. So whether you you're on YouTube, um, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, I cover all of that. And I go through everything from, you know, how to do your research and really come up with content ideas, how to brainstorm, put together a content strategy. I teach you all the different tools and platforms I use personally to come up with, um, content. Then I go over how to batch content create, which is the method I use to be able to do all of the stuff you see me do online. Um, super easy method that really will save you time and energy in the long run. Um, And then I go over best practices on social media, like how you can create engaging content, different tactics you can use. um, Yeah. And how to utilize the platforms fully. And then I would do a full review on analytics so that you can understand them. So I take you through all of this inside 23 video lessons. um, And if you choose to purchase it, you also get all the access to all of the cheat sheets and different guides I put together that are yours to download and keep. Um, And lastly, you will also be added to the community group chat I have. So all my students who have already completed this course, you guys will get added to our IG group chat um, for daily support from myself and the other members. So if you guys are interested, uh, how to build a highly engaged social media audience is officially open for sale. It is $2.97 for the entire course. Um, And you will get full access to the lesson starting on August 30th. And again, you have lifetime access. So you can work your way through all of the action items and the videos 
at your own pace. So just wanted to mention that for any of my content creators um, out there. So there will be a link in the description box. Um, with all that being said, guys, let's dive, dive right into this week's artist highlight. Very special artist. I'm super excited to talk about. I got to chat about my girl LPGOB. I've talked about her a lot on this podcast and on my YouTube channel, but she is such an incredible I won't even say, I mean, I guess she's still rising, but she's absolutely popping off this year. She's on every single lineup, getting booked like crazy, um, and for good reason, because she's making incredible house music. Uh, She's known for a piano house, or it's a little bit more like uplifting, a little bit more disco kind of vibes, but she is just a soulful musician, point blank period. Uh, She plays piano live really incredible she brings so much energy like she is just like a beam of light when you see her perform um i love her songs carry us move your body emancipation her ball and chain remix is incredible so many more um she's got a lot of good remixes definitely check her out um she's going to be playing a very small show coming up in brooklyn i will be there it's friday september 10th at quantum in brooklyn um lp owns a company called fem house which does a lot of things but she basically works with um female creators and producers so she teaches them not exactly just her but she offers courses that teach you production um she also has a radio show on diplo's revolution called fem house so this show at quantum is an all-female lineup which is incredible it's all her fem house artists so we fucking love that and we stand her so definitely go check out lpgob she is my artist highlight of the week And with all that being said, you guys, I want to introduce you to Connor Hamilton, otherwise known as at Cable Video, K-A-B-L-E Video. Um, This kind of like came about very quickly. So just a quick little background. Uh, Connor, how did we get introduced? I was online. I think he reached out to me online. Um, Yes, he found me online. He was like, we're we're in a lot of same circles. He lives in New Jersey um, and he shoots insane footage of artists and event brands um and then i finally met him at the elro show this summer he was shooting that he creates the most crazy videos he uses a 360 degree camera go check out his page it's insane we're going to show you a lot of examples today as well so yeah we met in person i was like this is such a cool guy he has such an interesting perspective haven't really covered anything like this um too much so i thought you guys would really enjoy hearing like from a videographer and yeah his story is crazy so i'm gonna just let him tell you all about himself and like i said if you guys watch on youtube we will include a lot of clips um from his actual work so highly recommend watching it this week since it will be very visual but give him a follow at cable video and please join me in welcoming connor hamilton to the podcast All right, you guys, welcome back. Uh, Today I'm joined by Connor Hamilton, um, a videographer that captures insane footage and content um, for some top tier artists and event brands that you definitely recognize in the dance music scene. Um, So today we're going to chat a little bit about his journey um, and how he goes about capturing this incredible footage. And he's got a lot of exciting things that have happened recently that we're going to address as well. But um, yeah, welcome to the podcast, Connor. Thank you, Emma. Thank you. Um, it's my first one, so this is a this is a big one for me. But uh, yes. I'm, I'm I'm happy to be here. I appreciate you having me on. Uh, <laughs> you are uh, killing the game right now. So uh, I see you all over the place, and I appreciate your uh, your work ethic with all this. So it's thank uh, you. It's really cool to be here, and I know you're uh, just heavy in the scene, and like I am, and uh, so I think mm-hmm. we'll have a good chat here about like all things related to that. Yeah, I'm so excited. I think people are going to be pumped about this topic too, because I haven't really had anybody on um, like this. And again, the timing, just from what I know, like what you're doing right now is crazy. So um, Connor sent me some insane footage. And for the YouTube version of this, you guys, I'm definitely going to try to include as many clips as possible. Um, But the timeline of, of your career is awesome. And you've had some really cool opportunities. So we'll definitely get into all of that and how that came together in case anybody else listening is like, wants to get into this industry or field but to start things off could you just give us a little bit of a background um on yourself where you're from uh yeah and what you did before all of this sure so i'm uh i live in jersey not too far from you yep um mm-hmm. uh which is our good jumping off point for the city um yep. so it's funny i saw you have your on your profile it's new jersey i'm like should i say new jersey or new york city you know it's like yeah. all the events are in the city um mm-hmm. 
but we're nicely positioned here. So I'm in Jersey. Um, I'm actually a firefighter full time here in Jersey. Um, oh, wow. So this is the uh, the passion project on the side. Um, gotcha. So I was there last night. I got off this morning, um, and this is just something that I uh, just I was always doing video stuff on trips and stuff with GoPros and that. And then once I kind of got into going to shows, that's when um, I was like seeing all their after movie and recaps. And I was like, man, they really do that cool. And mm -hmm. just sort of slowly started getting into that. And um, that's basically when um, started bringing GoPros to shows, you like sneaking them in and like mm -hmm. just grabbing shots and stuff of like, like this has to be captured. And I think for somebody like me, when you have that sort of mind, you're like, I gotta capture this, you know, like mm -hmm. there's something about that. And then that's obviously where this doesn't feel like so much like work to me. It's just something that needs to be documented. And, uh, you know, there, there's, I think a lot of people are like, oh, you're never gonna watch that video from that show, but I would, yes. you know. Yeah, like, yeah. Same. Yeah. So I'm like, no, I'm going to go back. And Does that ever happen to you on an airplane? I'm like, I have nothing else to do when, when you don't have Wi-Fi. Right. I just literally sit there. And watch That's like back the my perfect place videos. for it. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, now yeah. it's really cool too. It's like all the memories on iPhones. Also, it's like, yeah, it's like, oh, mm -hmm. it's a Cascade show or something. So yeah, that yeah. is crazy. So a passion project. So when, when did that start? Like, when did you start um, filming just on So I, when I was looking up stuff for this uh it looks like may 2018 um okay. right around there um that was uh, uh shane 54 uh who i've been a big fan of for a while he had a podcast on twitter he posted some video uh a bunch of dogs and uh he has a song called uh Dark and Long, which is Dark Train from uh, Train Spotting, you can do the movie, and either remix of it is really good. And uh, it, it goes Dark Train, Dark Train in the song. And he posts this video with dogs, and they're in a train. And I put the video in, and I put text that said Dog Train, Dark Train. So you have to see it. But I said, We're inserting that here. <laughs> yeah, perfect, perfect. So it was sent over to him. He loved it. He mentioned it on his podcast. Um, and I was like, Oh, it's so cool. It was just a goofy little. Mm -hmm. video and he loved it and then a week later he just was happened to be coming to new york city and i was like well now i have some contact mm -hmm. and what i did with what i this was the beginning of it but i would make these like pitch videos so kind of in this room camera set up like this and i'd say hey my name's connor hamilton i for the first one i've i've um i really love the music i love the scene i've never made a video for a show um, I got the camera, I got everything. I'd love to do it. Um, mm -hmm. and threw in some other goofy stuff, uh, you know, that catered to him and he was totally receptive to it. And he, you know, now I had that established thing from the silly video and that, and he was like, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And got to meet him, film the show. He came to my house here. We hung out all weekend and he is still one of my best buddies to this day. Um, That's even crazy. after, you know, three years, I, I talk to him all the time, a few times a week and, and, uh, he's been really good to me and that began it, the, just the dipping in of like opening up to the first show, like how you crack through and mm -hmm. that's about as basic as it come to for anybody else to, as a example, like, right. You guys want content, but they can't always afford somebody or something, you know, it, it's not yeah. a penny thing. It's just like, Hey, I want to do it. And any content you see so many, um, DJ's not posting iPhone videos and stuff mm -hmm. it works, but it's not the same as even if you weren't that great at it, if you were new, if you had that, you, that you, you provide value to them in that sense. Mm -hmm. so that was sort of the, the beginnings of it. That's crazy. Yeah. I, I love this because it's like, it just speaks to putting yourself out there. Like you're not waiting for things to come. And like, even there is something to say about like grinding and like doing the work and everything, but there's also something about like taking a risk and actually putting yourself out there and trying for it. Cause what's the worst somebody could say no at, yeah. at that time. What, did you just learn like video editing on your own? Like, what were you editing in? Cause I'm so curious about that. We'll get into a little bit of like the technical and equipment today yeah, as well. Cause yeah. I'm just curious. <laughs> um, I was watching YouTube tutorials for ages in here and as weeks and months of my life would go by. I'm like, I really was drawn to this stuff. 
And so I'd be watching tutorials here and there and whatnot. And, and I was like, I thought I never would gain traction with it. But mm -hmm. at some point I had felt I'd watched enough after movements and stuff to be like, I have the camera, I can go, I can overshoot it. I can shoot the entire show if I want, I can click it record. Right. I can go back and I can find enough to make 30 seconds, which was mm -hmm. what the after movie ended up being. Um, and that's ultimately what happened, you know? So um, that was sort of the progression of that. I, I was just amateur, all hobbyists, and I, I still feel that way. And that's mm -hmm. what's so crazy about being here. Like these guys with night mode that I work with are, are very professional, very technical, almost like filmmaker stuff. Some of the people I talk to in these shows, these after movies for festivals are insane. I mean, you've seen mm -hmm. them, these are, these are filmmakers. Yeah. And so I've gone a different route and I've fallen in here into more of what I would call like, um, I may be more for like the fun festival content um, mm -hmm. and not so much of the film type side, like cool shots and that, but like right. not that highly technical side. These guys are, are pros at that. So I'm more of this YouTube generation that came about of watching it and practicing and trying my own and, and just mm -hmm. fell into it that way. So, wow. Yeah, yeah, and you can it's it's a different style, but it's still you create such incredible stuff and it's just a different way of looking at it. But to your point, it is like getting incredible content for these artists or event brands who who need the help. So yeah. how did you evolve from that opportunity? And were you after that, were you like specifically, I want to just do dance music industry? I was always like that. And and what I think now is how lucky I am that. I didn't end up with music I don't like uh, right. <laughs> in the electronic world, which is funny because I was curious, like, I don't know if you speak publicly about music you don't like because you're in the scene, so you <laughs> probably can't. But like, for me, I've been pretty lucky where I, I haven't ended up with shows in general that are not like the, oh my God, you know. Property, yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, because they're out there, they're out there. Right. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, once I did that, that got me, I hung out with Shane for the weekend. I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. I mean, this is like, I love this guy. He's at my house mm -hmm. just like that. And uh, he was cool as shit. And uh, it was, it was just an awesome, awesome time. And I met promoters that were promoting his show from there. And like, yeah, we're doing an alley and feel a boat party last week uh, or, or next week. Mm -hmm. um, so then they were like, I was like, can I film? And they're like, yeah, sure. And then I was like, so motivated. I was like, oh my God, I got to get cameras and everything. And then I, that's when I yeah. went out and bought a 360 camera. My first show, which is now what I'm known for. Mm -hmm. um, so it was this real drive in me that I was taking it super seriously. I was taking it as if I was going to EDC. Mm -hmm. And when I look back on it, it, it was kind of like, it was a little naive of me in a sense, because it's like, it's not easy. These boat parties happen all the time or whatever and whatever. But if you think that way, yeah. you're not maxing out your potential. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is huge for me. Like, I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. And then I did an after movie for that. And then sure enough, Ali and Phila posted it. And I'm like, these guys have like 200 something thousand followers. What, yep. what, what, Facebook and, and then you start to realize like, these guys need content. Mm -hmm. Like, it, so here it was, was another free one or whatever. I just want to tag or something. But you start to realize that, these guys are doing a boat party in New York to do another one the next time, do another one. They can't always afford an after movie or whatever yeah. it is. Yep. A little, a little recap or something. And and if you, you know, you don't half ass or something, it's it has value to them. Right. Um, and that's what happened then. And then it just kept going from there. Um, and uh, yeah, so that was kind of the movement on it. And, um, and that's in 2018 at that point still? That yeah, because that was so May 2018 was when I was Shane, and then that was summer boat parties in the city. Wow. Um, okay. And that started start moving, and then I think later mm -hmm. um, from there was uh, a Juna Deep at the Mirage, and that was the big changing point for me. Mm -hmm. um, Huge we label, by the way, like not just a tiny label. Yeah. And Juna Deep, massive, yeah, 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 fan base. Yep. And what's really cool is these are the guys I love. I listen to Juna Beats, Juna Deep, Love Me On. Like I love those guys. I listen mm -hmm. to them all the time now, and that's what I was doing. I was going as a fan, right? And so I we went there. We got to the show. It was like sunset, and I walked in, and I had this camera. And nice. I just walked in and I was like, wait, I said, I want to, I said, I'll meet you guys in a second. And I just put this over my head 
and I walked up through the crowd, just up to the front. It was still loose, so I could get through, and I walked through. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, I got shot. I left. And then, like, through the night, a couple more or whatever. And then, I don't know if you're familiar with the show. It was like, it's like a famous Mirage show. That was when it was pouring rain for Yato. Oh, I don't geez. Know if, you, if you've ever heard of a show, it was fantastic. It was the oh, best wow. thing of all time. It was pouring, pouring rain, kind of like last night, if you were mm-hmm. around for that, like insane. And part of the show was videoed and then it cut off because they couldn't, they had tarps over him and you couldn't see him. That was too much. And occasionally oh. he would peek out and everyone <laughs> would scream. Your shoes were filled with water, you'd empty it out. And it was yep. the best time ever. And it was such a cool, and this is all in the one night. It was really cool. And that camera happens to be waterproof. And I'm just holding it up over my head. And years That's later cool. that came apart about where they were trying to get clips from the show because they had lost their own footage. And I was like, just you guys know, I have 360 footage dead center of the oh crowd. Oh my God. Pouring rain. And so Juno Beats eventually got that later as well. Wow. Um, so that was a pretty iconic show. So that's getting ahead of it. But what happened was um, I, that that was one of my early experiences with 360 camera. Um, mm-hmm. I had sent it over to Shane. I was like, check this out. Like, it's pretty cool. Like the, the trippy, tiny planet effect. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, it wasn't good enough for what I had envisioned mm-hmm. or whatever. But I send to Shane. Shane goes and he forwards it over to James Grant, who runs Ajuna Deep and mm-hmm. manages above and beyond. And James Grant wrote back and he's like, does he have more? I'm like, do I have more? I'm like, yeah, I have more. I'm like, I was about to throw it in the I trash. I filmed the whole like, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, this is crazy. So now I'm like going through. I'm like, I have one of this, one of this. And then out of that, I got a post. Ellie and Fur releasing a new song. They posted it. Uh, on a Juni, on a Juni Deep's Instagram, James wow. Graham posted one for him, and Jody Wisner posted one. So now I'm like, I'm getting posts now. Now Shane mm-hmm. has posted one, Ali and Fila, a Juni Deep from an event, and I was like, this is crazy. And that was a big catalyst because at that point, um, I did go to Burning Man Film Game, Gabe on Dresden. We got some great shots there. That was just as a fan, and that's mm-hmm. when I got to meet Dave and them. And Dave has been a loyal confidant since those days yeah but ultimately what did Shane's email to Juna Deep and, and James Grant did was we were going to Hong Kong for uh uh ABGT in Hong Kong and as a fan and so mm-hmm. I emailed James Grant I was like hey I'm going as a fan I was just holding a camera in my in yeah my hand right if I bring my equipment I can do better and he's like uh, if I give me a media pass, and he's like, okay, sure. And now I'm like, what? Like, this yeah. is insane. So now I'm going to major festival crazy. above and beyond all the major artists, like Andrew Bear, Elon. Yeah. And I'm like, this is insane. This is so cool. I have the media pass. This is something I've dreamed of for mm-hmm. these shows. Um, he's like, Thursday, there's a boat party. Um, there's a boat party Thursday, show up there. So I think it's a fan boat party. It turns out it is the private Ajuna Deep warm-up party. We get to some junk boat in Hong Kong Harbor. Oh um, my God. Hopefully you have the videos for us. Yeah, we have to show it. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, me and Shane went and I'm like, I'm like, what? I'm like, where? What? I'm like, are you kidding? There was like <laughs> 30 people on the boat. It was above and beyond Elon, Spencer Brown, like John O, Pablo, like it was, mm-hmm. and then like maybe girlfriends, Their management. Wives, yeah, that's photo it. guys. And <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm on a boat in Hong Kong right now. I'm like, this is insane. I was blown mm-hmm. away. And um, then I had the rest of the weekend there. So I don't want to ramble on about it, but that was a major no, point crazy. of like, I'm just like, give me the pat. And then I show up to this boat party like in Hong Kong and I, it was insane. So that was do they like, Do they expect any deliverables out of you? Like, how does that work? Or do they just say, here's a media pass. We know what you do. Like, they we'll were, expect you to They've always it. been good with me and you would have thought better on earlier. But again, it was it was free. It was very much mm-hmm. whatever. So now the deliverables discuss so everybody's on the same page and right. timing and whatnot. But then, and actually never with the Juno Beats has there been any communication we yeah i i think just initially i went there and i was just so gung ho about it cranked mm-hmm. it out uh after that i bought a new computer i was like it needs to be quicker because 360 destroys your computer like yeah, so, i can't even imagine yeah <laughs> i was just like uh, so all that yeah. was you know so i was just pumping out as much as i could because i loved it and it worked for them they had one for every artist or two mm-hmm. one for the event and all the different things they had the boat party so 
they've been really good with that and tagging me all the time, which is a great thing because that always doesn't happen. They were meticulous about that. And that that's super helpful. Led me to a million other opportunities from people that saw my work. Wow. And just to be clear, because about the 360 camera at, at that time, because now I'm like, my wheels are turning because I've seen Electric Zoo post videos yeah. like that with those really cool shots. Yeah. So at the time, was it also the perspective of that camera that was like so incredible for the artists? Like, had they never really seen stuff like that? Yeah, it was new and different. And and that's certainly the reason we're talking today. Like, mm -hmm. it's not the traditional route. Right. Um, and that is, that was, that was what it was. And I, I sent some videos to you in Hong Kong. <clears throat> I filmed Push the Button for me. It was a huge moment. Mm-hmm. When I watch the video now, it's very static. It's not moving. I love moving and shots all the time. Keep your attention and that. Yeah. It's a very static shot, but it was like, look at this camera. You know, it's new. It's cool. It's whatever. Yep. And it was like, well, that's different. So different always stands out in, in mm -hmm. this world. And it worked, you know. And then the later stuff, which I've sent, is just way, way better. Like, right. there's no contest. And you look back and I'm like, the, the big thing with those things is like, what if I shot and they didn't like it enough mm -hmm. and it just missed the bar. And I was like, right. good, but we're going to go with our traditional guys. I, I might've been out. Mm -hmm. like my opportunity might not have come back. So I don't know what they thought about it at the time, but like, it wasn't the best. I mean, maybe it was at the time and it was different. But I mean, exactly. It, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But, but those things always were over my head. Like if I don't make the cut, like a football team or something, I might be out. I don't mm -hmm. know. Like I don't, it might just say, let's well, stop playing games with this thing here and waste our time, you know? But it was the exact opposite. They were yeah. super into And to your point, that kind of like led into other opportunities from there. I mean, people have heard enough about it. We obviously know we had, you know, a panini, which wiped out the world for like a year. Yeah. Yeah. I can't say the word, so I don't get in trouble. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so like obviously you, you go through something like that, which you probably had whatever, two years of momentum building with all of yeah. this. But yeah, catch us up to speed now. Like what are some of the other big shows that you've shot? Because I know you've done a lot with Above and Beyond yeah. um, since then. So just been itching to get back at it over quarantine. Like, what do I do here? You know, and yeah. just trying to do new things. And there wasn't much to do. I mean, pull up old videos and do the best I could. And and uh, that's where I really should have had like a social media blitz, I guess, and do TikTok. I'm just finally getting on that and all that. Mm -hmm. But uh, Oh, TikTok's um, going to be good for you, I feel like. <laughs> yeah. The problem is, too, with with everything is pushing towards shorter formats now. Mm -hmm. I really like a good 60 second to a minute or a minute 20 video. Build yeah. a song, drop I still like 60 seconds. I mean, reels just became 60 seconds because it, it depends. I'm like, I think there are some things that in 15 seconds, it gets the point across, but there are, I'm glad TikTok expanded to three minutes now, which yeah. is nice because yeah. there yeah. are yeah. some things where you're, maybe you're sharing information where like you get cut off at a minute, yeah, just yeah, not yeah. enough time. So yeah. play, but just play around and see what your audience like responds for sure, to. For sure. And and that's the thing about different formats for different things and mm -hmm. sizes and vertical and horizontal. And yep. cutting it. <laughs> so it's a nightmare. Um, yeah. But so now I was waiting to get back into it. Um, I talked to the guys from Elro, who I know you all know. Mm -hmm. um, and they had me back to do Elroy. I did it previously indoors. I was very excited to do it outdoors. Um, and it was the first one back and I was like, so ready to hit it hard. Mm -hmm. And uh, I shot there, uh, shots came out really cool. Cause Elro's you know, insane. I mean, I, hopefully <laughs> viewers know how insane visually it is. There's nothing compares confetti and stilt walkers. And uh, I mean, just magnificent production into that mm -hmm. um anybody who sees is like what is that even if you're not in the music so yeah my style video fits very well there um it's very immersive um yep and Great I met, word. yeah so i met the guys from night mode video there who doesn't do the mirage stuff and they brought me on for gareth emery the next week so one week later so this is only the past three weeks so mm -hmm. um Shot Gareth, who I love. I have a I have a history with him. Um, making these silly videos, I did for Shane with him, um, and uh, was able to knock out of park. Got some really the best shots I've ever gotten, and then that led me to reaching out to somebody who I'd reached out before, a mm -hmm. big artist, um, uh, Tiesto. My buddy Matt Matucci in Canada 
she has to post a 360 video a while ago and uh, okay. seemed to like it. And he just commented in the post and say, check out my buddy cable video. And then bam, I have a follow from Tiesta. I'm like, oh my insane. God. <laughs> I'm like, what a guy, what a move, you know? Yeah, seriously. So that is incredible. I was like, mega, mega, mega huge. So I was like, all right, I follow, I follow. What, okay, how do I do that? All right, come down, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, all right, well, you have to message him because now you're not going into the hidden folder. Mm -hmm. You have a chance. So I sent him my best video, which was from Izu, Bum Beyond at the time. And I was like, this is what I do. I'd love to work with you when things come back. And he's like, yeah, man. He was like very enthusiastic. He was like, hi, Connor, I love your videos. Maybe when things get back together, we can get together on something. You know, mm. that was in like May, April of 2020. So here I am like, ah, like right. for everything. <laughs> and uh, I did these shows this past week. So in the past three weeks here, things start picking up, start shooting again. The new content was the best I've ever shot. And I reached out to, um, and I'm like, let me send them the new stuff. You know, mm -hmm. I reach out to him a couple of weeks about cream fields. And I was like, hey, can we do cream fields? And it says red and no answer. I'm like, oh, no. Oh. Yeah. You know? And I'm like, <laughs> what do I do? I'm like, am I done here forever again? Like, you have these constant, like, yep. you know, and like the next thing will be an unfollow, you know. Right. <laughs> Gary V followed me at some point. I was like, this shut is the best up. Thing ever. And one day he unfollowed me and I'm like, you can never get over it. I'm like, yeah, roller coaster of emotions. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, what did I do to you? <laughs> That's so crazy. I was afraid of the same with him and Tiesto sent him the stuff. I said, this is the latest stuff I've been shooting. And he wrote back to me yesterday and he said, uh, I said, let me know if you want to do this at EDC Las Vegas. And he said, we must with an exclamation point. Uh, <laughs> let's crush this. Uh, here's my manager's info. Holy uh, shit. <laughs> yeah. And, and I was just like, that is going to be on. Yeah. And it's just the beginning too. Like, it's just the momentum is building. You've shot some incredible stuff the past few weeks. So it's, that's going to be such a special show. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So my first uh, EDC with one of the biggest artists, like, so how things have gone in three weeks here is just mm -hmm. next level, you know, and uh, I'm just feeling it, feeling the momentum and uh, just keeping at it now, you know, it's kind of hard to lose focus when you're, when you're at this point, you know? Right. Right. It's not I have some logistical questions for you too, yeah. just because I actually saw you in action at Elro, which was really cool. Yes, you're yes. running around. Plus yeah. talk about how crowded it is. Like you're trying to get through the crowd, which I imagine it's not like an easy job. Like you said, it's work, but you're enjoying yes, it so much yes, and you yes. get to be in this experience. So like, what does your night actually look like at either these Mirage shows or, you know, you've done the gorge and stuff like that. Yeah. Like what is the whole experience like for you? Yeah. So I, I think a good example of it is the above and beyond guys are great. I can run around, do what I want. Um, for the most part, if it's A and B, it's a little bit more controlled, mm -hmm. hit it, quit it out. Um, Gareth and Emery have a good relationship with them and they were huge on the last videos. So they give you a little freedom. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, GJ snake who I shot a week ago or however it's been now, uh, much more controlled. It's like a whole team who's walking out like Conor McGregor, um, he's got his own <laughs> video guy that travels with him. I mean, he's yeah. got 8.1 million Instagram followers. Um, he is mega huge. Mm -hmm. um, and so their tour manager is, is communicating with the Mirage. Be like, this is what we want. This is what we want. This is the box we want this guy in. Yeah. You know? And it starts off with like, yeah, you can do a little. And then I start running around and they're like, ah, why don't, don't you do keep that. it here? <laughs> and then they're like, ah, you know what? Actually, why don't you keep it back there? And then I find myself like, you know, I'm, I'm in the bathrooms, like helping yeah. pick up garbage with, with guys. I'll just bring a drone next time. I'll yeah, I'm like, this is just great. This is great. Um, That's amazing. So it's all challenges, though. I mean, <laughs> you figure out then, a way around it. And then from that, yeah, I ended up in the crowd. And then he's like, open the middle up. And a big mosh pit broke out around me. Oh, so like geez. a lot of times things do turn out one way or another. You know, mm -hmm. that shot was best in the crowd and it worked out that way. But with bigger artists that you're not familiar with, that happens more, the more familiar. And that's why connections and relationships in this industry, whether it's security or tour managers and all that stage people, mm -hmm. they don't, I get you near know, the pyro a little too much. They like to keep me away from it. You know, I'm yeah. trying to be like, no, I know I'm not going to go too close. You know, mm -hmm. it's all a balancing act to that. And I try not to push your buttons. I just want to be on the same page as like, I want to go here. If the line is here, can I go here? You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and I promise I won't go past it, you know, and there's a trust element to all that and, mm -hmm. and whatnot. So that's how it varies with the different artists from, from what I've experienced. 
Cool. It's just cool to see the other side of it. Cause not, not only are you showing this like crazy perspective with the moving and the video and everything that you're doing, but then yeah, you see this whole other side of the industry too, that people don't get to experience. And those are some huge names you've been shooting with lately. So any, anything coming up in the fall besides Tiesto that you're excited about? Um, yeah. So, uh, uh, Izu picked me up. So I'll be doing Izu. Nice. Um, uh, EDC was, we mentioned dream state and Cali looks amazing. The lineup. I love that one. All mm-hmm. tuna beats guys. Um, and then keeping options open. Now it's a matter of like hammering out emails to artists and see who wants to work. Mm-hmm. Um, the portfolio is better and people are interested before. So even more so now, um, what I want to do too, is a lot more of like fun festival stuff. Like I talked before, mm-hmm. um, uh, you know, Shuffler, Elena Cruz, mm-hmm. um, New York City based. So for Izu, I, I haven't reached out to her yet. It's on my list. I want to reach out to her and do some like collaboration work with um, at the festival. So like right. something where she's shuffling through the crowd and I'm following her with the camera. These big shots that come up and down as she breaks through going through. Oh, the she would love things. that. Yeah. 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 So so like a little bit more planned out fun type of stuff instead of uh, DJ crowd, you know, back and forth, mm-hmm. which still looks good, but that stuff's fun. If you can now add a subject, a moving subject to the shots and that. Yeah. Stuff. And telling but, a story in that way. Plus, I mean, Elena is huge as well. Like yeah. it's not just the artists. You have these really, really big huge. profiles. Yeah. In I the mean, space as well. More people know her than probably some artists. Like she's yeah. like 600,000 followers. <laughs> it's crazy when you see like, yeah, yeah. What the amount of mm-hmm. followers, like somebody like her has. And then like, I think above and beyond is less than her, you know? Yeah. It's and insane. It's just, the val- the certain like social media value of certain things and that. So um yeah, I mean she's a big one and just great more great visual content, you know. Mm-hmm. Drop the sick song over it and like what a cool video at a festival, like easy, like running through the lawn, you know. Yeah. So, oh, that's gonna be amazing. Is there yeah. anything? Um <clears throat> I know you've said you've gotten your best footage in like the last few weeks, but any yeah. experiences that like really stand out to you? Cause you've seen a lot of production now at this point. You've been to a lot of shows. So anything that like really blew you away? Yeah, I mean, we talked about Elro, how cool that is. And if anybody hasn't seen it, they should look it up and check mm-hmm. it out. Um, I still haven't posted my videos from it. Um, uh, but uh, the two other ones, Burning Man is insane. Um, that is very different than all the things we're talking about. Um, mm-hmm. uh, no money, no VIP areas. And what that does to the experience of everybody being the same and feeling a part of it is really, really right. cool biking around everywhere there's no buying of a drink there's no t-shirts for sale there's no coke you know mm-hmm. no extra large cokes for sale or it's just like it's a really cool experience um igloo fest in montreal was really cool that was like sub-zero temperatures in montreal like the d like, oh. like camera screen was freezing up and i was like what do i oh do my here? God. You, know, so you had to keep it like in your pocket and pull it out just to record get the shop put it back Wow. Um, everybody in coats, which is why I'm like, why can't we do this at the Mirage? Here? Yeah. <laughs> we have problems here. So, they have uh, the, the fire coming out of the pillars. Like we could, we got yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we totally fine. So I'm like, I've seen it there. Like, why can't we totally make this work? You know? Yep. Um, oh man. But those are some standouts. I mean, uh, the group therapy events are really cool. All the different spots they did it. Prague I loved and Hong Kong. So it's cool. to like, rotate that around, but, um, uh, what about you? I mean, what one stand out for you, do you in particular? Oh, that's a good question. Well, on the ABGT kind of note, I saw they announced their group therapy weekender for next yes. year. And I've always oh. wanted to go to the gorge. I forgot that one. I forgot so that one. I'm like, mm, there is, a, I really wanted to do Tomorrowland next year, but now there's a part oh, wow. of me. It's like, this would be probably a little, le- very different experiences, obviously, but I don't know. There's part of me that's like, maybe, <clears throat> maybe we should do the gorge next year. <laughs> so we'll see that about was, that. Uh... Yeah, that was another jumping off point for my videos where they changed style. And that was really, uh, the venue was insane. And if you haven't been to Gorge, a lot of people say Red Rocks are better. I'm like, yeah, Gorge is, have you been or? No, I haven't been to either. Yeah, oh uh, man, the Gorge is like, it's Red Rocks is more than closed and the Gorge is like open, endless. Mm. Um, you have these rock walls at Red Rocks, but Gorge, the Gorge just stretches forever. And when you first see it, you're like, so filming there was really cool to be able to get it at such an iconic venue. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was another one I forgot that is that is super, super cool in terms of like 
just, just natural this. beauty. Yeah. yeah like on the top <laughs> of a stage on the side of a, uh, of, of a, of a yeah. park. It's not, but it's like, no, it looks insane. I don't know. I mean, what immediately comes to mind is obviously like any Eric Prydz show I've ever been to because yeah. his production is just yeah, 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 top yeah. notch. I did the Hollow show in 2019, yeah. but he even came. He did an Adam Bayer back to back Serez D show um, at the U, uh, Navy Yard in Brooklyn, okay. which was probably the biggest like single venue I've ever been to because it's literally a shipyard, and the amount of people there that it just went back for so long and it was like these underground like warehouse vibes it was like incredible so anything he does i'm just like blown away but i have to agree with you i'm biased with above and beyond too like they just create something yeah yeah special every time they do a show i i miss the drops with eric prince i really do right (laughs) yeah (laughs) true. we can get a few more drops in there yeah (laughs) (laughs) fair enough fair enough oh no the visual though yeah i mean i i i want to check them out again for the visual side of it the hollow ones i missed Mm-hmm. No, he's amazing. Yeah. But um, I'm going to have to ask you some questions off the line, too, about the Elro sure. show being indoors, because if anybody's in the area, Elro is coming back to New York, yeah. but they're going to be indoors at Avant Gardner December 11th, 10 out of 10. Do not miss that show. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, I mean, last few questions here, I guess. What do you enjoy most about shooting in the dance music industry? It's so fun, you know, because it's it's where you kind of want to be when you're buying the tickets and everything. Um and then you're there and you have the access and the people. So there's this wonderful feedback where you're shooting it and it, it's awesome that you're there and you're meeting the artist. But then you get home and you edit and you post it. And there's all these people that are so friendly, so supportive mm-hmm. of what you're doing, you know, and, and that's across the board. And even today I posted that I was coming on the podcast with you and people were like, oh, I love her, you know. That's and, so cool. and yeah, you don't even see that. I see <laughs> no. that, but I haven't sent over, you know, but I know you get it directly too. Like I've gotten it. And it's just such a wonderful like feedback loop of like, now you're recording what people love, you post mm-hmm. it and then they love what you're doing. And it's just this constant thing. So mm-hmm. that's a really cool element of it. And it's a place I really like to, I, I really feel comfortable with where I like being at, you know? Yeah, no, it is. I mean, you're creating an experience for people who don't get to go there. And again, like the right. perspective of your videos and how you're captioning. I love the tagline you have in your Instagram makes so much sense. Like seeing artists, like you've never seen them before. It's super accurate. So it's really cool guys. Like, please go check out all of your stuff and last up any tips or advice for somebody who wants to do this. Cause I know you've had a lot of growth just in the last few years. Yeah. Um, uh, when I started, everybody was like, you get paid, you get paid, you get paid, you get paid. <laughs> and that went on for a while. And it's like, what's nice about me, like I said, I, this isn't my full-time thing. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a passion thing is that I wasn't loving it to death, like without any of that. And I was like, it'll come someday. Um, and these things come and go. Artists have budgets. They don't have budgets. And maybe they do, maybe they don't. So even now, like you might get, not get what you're expecting or something, but if you love it, then you can promote your name with that. So the route I took was like, it's specifically with video, but I think this can work across the board. Like uh, even for a fire department, I tell you a fire right, like I volunteered and now I have a resume builder to say, I have mm-hmm. certification, I have EMT, I have this. And then you use that to get it somewhere else. Right. You need to find those things to be able to get to the next level. You, you can't just, People often they're like, oh, I'll email TS them. Like, can I do a video for you? I mean, is that going to work? We don't think it's going to work. Start right. with smaller <laughs> artists, build a portfolio, mm-hmm. um, do it for free. And similar to like I did, like just say, hey, I'm I, big fan. You're smaller. These guys want content and crush mm-hmm. it when you do it. And you can use that video to go to the next guy, go to the next guy. And then like things all of a sudden that you never would realize open up. And I think there's an old Steve Jobs quote about like, you can't see how the dots connect looking forward, only backwards. Mm. I mean, you've seen, and we've talked about a little how it worked for me. You could have never imagined like just getting to this point now. Right. Um, with a DM from Tiesto yesterday, like it just blows my mind, but just get in it, get your hands dirty. And if something doesn't work, you try another one. I mean, everybody wants the exact plan. They want to be like, give me the blueprint so I can go boop, 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 boop. And it's like, it doesn't work that way. You're going to have five failures, 10 failures, this and that. And as long as you're staying at it, you're eventually going to break through. You're going to make connections along the way and it will end up panning out for you in the long run if you're passionate about it. 
could not agree with you more. I'm like, we're clipping that right there. Yeah, that was yeah, so, yeah. Right, it's right, right. so, so true. And I believe in timing too. And, and kind of like with the momentum, like you said, you have something else going on. You have a job besides doing this, but you kind of like have that feeling, you know, you're supposed to be doing this. You're creating this incredible content and you're riding that wave. And I feel like when you're in alignment with what you're supposed to be doing, like these things, things just come to you and it's crazy. You never know what tomorrow's going to bring, right? Right. You had no idea you were going to get that message. So yeah. you're just out here doing your thing and and going crazy. And you said this earlier and I appreciate this too. You're just so excited to be there, which is yeah. such a huge thing. I feel the same way. Like every time I go to a show or even with Elro having the opportunity and there are people in the industry who like are totally phased by it. Yeah, so oh, I feel man. like you actually are, I don't yeah, know when you have yeah, good yeah. intentions, good things happen to you, I believe. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of people in it. What, what I found too, they're, they're like, Oh, you know, that person you like, mm-hmm. they're obsessed with this thing. And I know, you know, these people, they're all around you. They're, they are very obsessed with being like, Oh my God, I know this person. I know this, I know that. And, I, and, blah, 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 blah. and it's just like, the, the more you get to know these people, the less actually interesting it becomes. They're so normal. Mm-hmm. I mean, Dave Dresden, one of the Grammy nominated, like coolest motherfuckers out there. Like, yeah. So like chill down the earth. And if you actually hung out with him, you'd be like, this is ridiculous. Be like, oh my God, did you know Dave did? I'm right. like, I don't care what the fuck Dave did. Like he's, I, I don't know what the thing is here. Like yeah. maybe yesterday, like, oh, it's crazy. I ran into him somewhere. He's a huge but these are normal people. And the more you talk to them, they're like, they just like creating stuff at a computer or whatever and a place mm-hmm. like this. And, and they're as cool as can be, you know? And, and and they're really like, once you break through it, you're like, these are great people like the same music as us, which makes our, this, uh, the EDM scene very accessible. Mm-hmm. Uh, that these artists are very reachable on Twitch and social media and stuff. Yep. They're very normal people, which is great that it hasn't broken through the mainstream that we can still reach these people, talk to them, rub shoulders with them without mm-hmm. all the like, crazy, you know, uh, paparazzi life. But yeah, unless you're yeah. DJ Snake. No, I'm just yeah, kidding. yeah, yeah, of course, <laughs> we love of DJ course. Snake. Okay. Then I gotta go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my God, this was so awesome. Thank you so much for, for coming on today. And like I said, we'll include a bunch of clips because this is a visual podcast yes, for sure. Yes, so yes. we'll include everything. And um, yeah, plug where everybody can find you and connect with you online too. Yeah, so it's cable video with a K, K A B L E. Um, Instagram is the best spot, but I'm on TikTok now, and I'm trying to put more of my long form videos on YouTube because Instagram we're using the cloud quality and all that. So I'm trying to get the good quality longer clips on YouTube. So mm-hmm. people that really want to see more of them, they can really dive into that and see them the way they're properly supposed to be seen instead of a little tiny. Yeah. Little- but cool. Alrighty. I'll yeah. include links for all this stuff. Um, Connor, hang tight. Everybody else. I'll be back with some news. Cool. Alrighty, you guys, again, huge shout out to Connor for coming on the podcast. Go show him love and support. Give at cable video a follow on TikTok and Instagram. All right, guys, if you could do one thing, just go do that um, and check out his footage because it's fucking crazy. Uh, with all that being said, let's jump into some news because we've got a lot to talk about here. Um, mainly festival news for the most part. One artist update that I want to run um, by you guys. Wait, hold on. Let me pull this up. Austin City Limits Instagram. So we'll start here because I did notice, I believe Stevie Nicks was removed um, from Austin City Limits lineup. Uh, hold on. I'll do that second. First and foremost, let's do uh, Bottle Rock. Bottle Rock, Napa, drop their lineup. Uh, This is wine and brew, music, food, all that good stuff. Three-day event. Um, Labor Day weekend, again, absolutely stacked. Uh, And this is mixed genre. You've got, looks like country, rock, hip-hop. I'm sure you have some dance music on here too. Let's see. I didn't really like look through this. I mean, your headliners are Chris Stapleton, Guns N' Roses, and Foo Foo Fighters. Uh, maybe there's not really. Oh, no, there's a little bit of dance music. OK, but you've got like G-Eazy, Marin Morris, uh, Chromio is on here. Miley Cyrus, Run the Jewels, Portugal, the man. You have Olivia O'Brien, uh, Megan Thee Stallion, Cage the Elephants, Black Puma, Jimmy Eat World. Hell yes. So, yeah, very interesting. Um, just I would be there to drink the wine. You know what I'm saying? That sounds like a fucking fire event. Um, we also have this, this kind of was announced a little while ago, but I don't think I mentioned it in the news. So if you guys didn't see Kygo, uh, announced like a new small festival that he's doing in the Hamptons, uh, it's single day, August 29th. 
Um, and the headliners are Zed, Kygo, Griffin, um, Frank Walker, and then Forrester Music. It's called Palm Tree Music Festival. I mean, that sounds very vibey. That is going to be an interesting crowd in the Hamptons. <laughs> I'm going to picture a very preppy crowd. Um, but yeah, that sounds really cool. Um, Hamptons are far from me. That's probably like a two hour drive, if not a little bit more. But very summery. Sounds like very much Kygo. Um, and like Griffin's going to be there. So that's awesome. Um, Dance Festopia fans, you guys have your map, which is really exciting. Um, probably by the time this comes out, you have more than that. Um, but you can check that out on their Instagram page if you want to see the full layout of the stages and all of that and the campgrounds. Uh, that's coming up soon as well. What dates are those? That's September 9th to the 12th. Um, this one I'm super excited about. You might have seen Seismic Dance Event 4.0 drop their lineup. And fam, if you are in Texas and you don't have anything going on, or you don't even have to be in Texas. If you want to travel there, um, it's November 12th to the 14th. It's the same weekend as EDC Orlando. Otherwise, I would 100% be going to this because it is all house and techno and it's absolutely stacked. Three days, um, some high. I mean, all of these are highlights, but Amelie Lenz, Ben Bomer, you've Biscuits, Black Coffee, Claptone, Clooney, Dom Dalla, Eli Brown, Jamie Jones, Kyle Watson, Mason Maynard, Michael Beebe, Nina Kravitz, Rebuke, Patrick Topping, Somi, Solardo, Volick, Will Clark, Yato. Like that's just naming a couple. So that is incredible. I know my girl Vibe with Aid is going to be covering that festival. Um, okay, wait, I messed up the AC lineup, ACL lineup here. I think they had a couple people change. So it said Tyler, the creator, Duran Duran added after DeBaby's departure. Oh, that's right. DeBaby had some controversial um, statements from what I read. And Stevie Nicks also dropped from the event. So they added Tyler, the creator and Duran Duran, I guess. But just note that I forget what Stevie Nicks deal was, though. I think it was something health related, if I'm not wrong. Um, But just note those updates if you guys plan on attending that. Okay, you guys, and last up, this was an announcement from Chocolate Puma. Um, Some of you guys might be familiar with them. Really incredible house act. One of the two artists is actually departing the group, so I wanted to read his message um, on Twitter. So it said, some time ago, I had made one of the hardest decisions ever. I will stop touring. A lot has happened in my personal life since the beginning of this pandemic, both sad and beautiful. Being forced to be at home like the rest of my fellow DJs made me think a lot about my life, and it felt like a tipping point for me. I feel very privileged that I was given the opportunity to travel the world and play for you guys. I feel very grateful and humbled that so many of you enjoy our music. But in the end, I felt like the crazy tour life has taken a heavy heavy toll on me both physically and mentally. I have realized that being at home with my loved ones and being in a more quiet and structured environment made me a happier and healthier person. Although I undoubtedly will miss seeing your faces, feeding off your energy, Um, and experiencing our music on dance floors, I'm also very much looking forward to spending more time being creative in the studio. Having the time to dive deeper, to be the total producer nerd, to explore new paths, to take Chocolate Puma to the next level. For those of you who love to come and dance to our sets, rest assured, Renee can't wait to DJ again, to play our music, and to represent Chocolate Puma on stages around the world. This is a new chapter in our career of 30 years, and to be honest, we're both very daunted, but excited and, and inspired. So that's the update. Excuse me, I said that incorrectly in the beginning. He's not departing the group. He is just not going to be touring on behalf of the group anymore. He's going to be staying home. But I totally respect and appreciate his, um, and this was Gaston who said this, um, respect and appreciate his decision to take his mental health and physical health seriously. I think a lot of people, a lot of artists were in a very similar boat, especially the culture shock of doing their touring life to being at home is extremely jarring um so i'm you know wishing him the best taking care of himself and he will still be a part of the group making music so that's really incredible um chaka puma has made some of my, some of my favorite songs and i had the pleasure of seeing them oh gosh it was a couple of years ago now um but yeah incredible artists so definitely show them some love and support throughout this time uh, and with all that being said you guys thank you so so much for checking out today's episode um, I really hope you enjoyed hearing from Connor and definitely give me your feedback. You guys, I want to know who you want to hear from. You know, I did a poll in the Facebook group that was really helpful. So thank you to everybody who voted in there. Um, I, I put a bunch of different topics for episodes and you guys voted that you wanted way more solo episodes of me just talking about like helpful tips and advice. So I will definitely plan more around that. 
Um, and you also wanted festival reviews and more artists on the podcast. So I will be working on all of those things. You'll have at least four festival reviews coming this fall, you guys. So don't worry. Those are coming. Um, and then I will book some artists as well. But let me know who you want to hear from um, at Rave Culture Cast on all social media. Uh, we have a Facebook group and a Discord group as well. If you guys want to meet other ravers and festival goers, or find a rave fam or people to attend shows with, all of the links will be down below in the show notes. Um, and I think that's pretty much all I have, you guys. If you could share this to your Instagram stories and tag at Rave Culture Cast or send a tweet out, send a link out, that would be very much appreciated. Uh, with all that being said, enjoy your weeks, have a good one, and I will see you next Wednesday. Bye, guys. Bye.